Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it. Good. Yeah. So you're on the right hand screen, right? Okay. Do you guys see yes. my screen? Yes. We are able okay. to see it. So anything you want to do, just do it on that side, and uh, everybody's got it. Okay. Um. So I think uh, what we want to go over today is some basic info on Creo schematics, on using Creo schematics to create uh, logical harness references for uh, for creating harnesses. Um, and I want to walk you guys through a simple exercise of just the routing. Um, very simple, like maybe three connector harness uh, using Creo schematic. Uh, it shouldn't take more than an hour, I think. So first thing is you need uh, you need Creo schematics. It's a uh, it's right here. It's my it, this is my shortcut. Uh, it's a standalone software. I, I'm not sure. I don't think you guys have that right. But uh, from talking to Eric, I understand you guys don't have that software yet. Yes, we don't have. Okay. So uh, this is what uh, where I think you're gonna need if you wanna if you wanna do a similar thing what we are doing. Um, and let's just start and see how that looks like. It's a standalone software. It's not part of uh, Creo. It's called Creo Schematics, and it's by PTC. It's by the same company. And it's basically uh, a software that you put in your harness connections in. So you sketch a basic, very very basic drawing that represents uh, how the harness looks like. And I think the best, uh, what, what we've been doing, we've been keeping our files or schematic files in the folder. Uh, so we have a schematic uh, file folder with all the harnesses that we're creating and every one of these folders contains a file. So what I do when I start a new harness, I usually just, co I just copy one of the latest ones. Uh, so let's find something recent from this year, for example. We can try that one, 56. And I do a copy. And it's a fairly large file, it's like 10 megabytes. And it will just copy. And I give it a new name to, to a folder. So let's just call this test. And today's date. March 8, 2018. So you give it a new name, and it's in, in the same folder, schematics. It, it, I just created a new file. And you can minimize that window, and you can open that file up. I think for the short term, um, as you guys get into Korea schematics, you'll probably create the folder locally. In the longer term, I'm not sure of the timing, but longer term, we'll probably try to get these files, this information, into uh, PDM link or Windchill, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, uh, we gotta work on that. We gotta figure out how to upload these files into a Windchill so they're uh, so they're controlled uh, to Windchill. So and and the software we have has a lot of. Uh, different options. One of them is directory defaults that you can point to all the folders that you're going to be using where you're going to be exporting your info and opening the files and importing stuff. So um, I already have that set up so when I hit open design it already takes me to that folder. And you see I'm in the same folder schematics and the, the software sees this folder as a as project. So it doesn't, you know, there uh, it recognizes them as, them as projects, and here's my new file, 038, uh, 0818. So we can open that up and see how that looks like. 
and it's an existing harness that I, that I, that I created. So it has everything already in it. it. Has all the connectors and wires. So this is how how a harness file, how how the Creo harness site looks like. And every one of these features has parameters assigned to them. Connectors uh, have descriptions. For example, this is a P9 connector item one. And let me, and you guys uh, go ahead and ask questions or stop me when I'm going too fast or, you know, or. Okay, sure. We'll or when you, have, when you guys don't understand something or just want to ask okay. a question. So, so this is how the basic file looks like. It contains basically a representation of the harness, of the connection of the harness in its okay. own uh, way. So it has connectors. These are wires, and wires also have parameters. For example, this is wire one. It's 18 gauge wire, wire uh, size of the wire, uh, minimum bend radius, color, and, and all that, you know. And you can add more parameters as you need them. But this this is the basic ones that we need that, and that we use. So this, these are parameters for the wires, and there are parameters for the connectors. The connectors have names, uh, have descriptions, and they're also, when you zoom in on these, these are ports. So you can select also, uh, by going into here, you can do select member, and it will you'll be able to select all the ports too. So for example, this connector has 12 ports because it's, it's a 12 pin connector. So let's go to uh, pin, for example, six, and I'll show you what's in what's in here. So this is these are individual parameters inside the connector for individual pins. So you got a pin number, you got a pin name, and a and an entry port number. And these are very important. If you don't have this info inside your connector, your harnessing, your harness file will not work. So all these parameters, they have to be filled out. And, and you can create all these uh, custom connectors or standard connectors, and you can save them in, you can save them in a catalog, like a connection catalog right here see i have all bunch of connectors that we are using i think for the most part the connectors used will be standard and available in this library yes, yes. but if anything comes up it's i think it's just like a basic uh, 2d sketch and you assign properties to it yes it, it that's basically what it is it's a it's a basic sketch and i'll open this one up for as an example uh, Let's, let's go back to the 12 pin. So it's a basic sketch of a connector and here where you can modify it, you can type these numbers and you can draw lines. Uh, there's a whole like geometry menu here on top that you can use to create these. And this is where also you're creating the ports. Uh, oh, wow, okay. The ports are, are, are their own individual uh, features um I, it's been a while what, so since i've done this so you actually have like a port feature that you just drop into here you locate these ports and then you go into parameters and you assign parameters uh you can assign a part name but that's uh not really necessary because you're going to be using a lot of like common connectors for example this is a representation of a 12 pin so any 12 pin connector you're going to have you can use this symbol for uh, but ports are very important so uh, and that's basically it uh, same thing with the wires there's uh there is here it is. Here's here are the wires. We've been I'm just basically using one type of wire, and I'm assigning uh, different parameters to it. You can assign different gauges. 
uh, for example, this one is 20 gauge, but if you want to change it to to a different size, you open up this uh, this menu right here, and you can scroll to all kinds of different sizes, and you can create your own custom sizes. So, for example, I I have assigned 20 gauge wire to wire one, but if you go to wire 13, for example, it's gonna be gauge 12. Okay. So it's uh, assigning of the wire size is also important. You know, checking that wire size, make sure you you using the right info because that's gonna be that's gonna drive your you know, later uh, things in your model. And let's wipe this out because this is a new this is our new exercise project that we created so we can wipe this out D delete delete everything and let's go to uh, a simple exercise of creating a very simple harness so you, what you're gonna start with is and I'm assuming you know you guys gonna have access to the library or um, or <laughs> We're gonna send your or library, or you guys gonna create your own. I'm not sure how that's gonna work yet. Is the library in that same directory, uh, same folder directory, or is it within? Uh... Yes, yes. The common library is in the. Okay. In in in, in that directory. May... So. Yeah. Uh, so let's just put some connectors in and try to route a couple of wires between them and. This is a very basic one pin connector fast stand that we are using. Are you guys seeing my screen? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So. Sure. Are you guys there? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's drop a couple of connectors and you can orient them any way you want and do basically anything. Uh, it's it's very flexible, so I just drop two of these into my design, and let's also put a splice in here. Okay. Let's put a splice in here between them, and let's put a different one in there too, something that has a different shape. So basically, we are doing wiring, right? So we need to select uh, diagram type should be like wiring. Yes, yes. yes okay. Yeah. It, it it's kind of like a diagram uh, type of software where you uh, where you're gonna be sketching a design. And I'm just looking for for another connector that we can use with this. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's do that. Let's have a ring terminal on that side. So I created a very simple uh, design. Mm -hmm. I have a slip-on connector on one side. I have a splice between them, and I have two connectors on that side. And we can we can assign names to these so okay. let's name them this one's going to be code one for example connector one connector one this is going to be your splice one uh, excuse me, but uh, yes. this name, yeah, this name, what you're giving for connector one and splice, it should, uh, it should be same as what we get in bill of material or. Uh... Yes, exactly. It, uh, you, you're completely right. The connectors, the the connector descriptions will usually match your bill of material. So, for example, if uh, it's an item one, mm -hmm. on the bill of material, it would say, you know. Uh, item one in parentheses 
and then a name of the connectors. They're usually like J12345 or P12345 or just custom names. Okay. So not the numbers. Uh, yeah, so, so your description would look like this. For example, this would be, um, let's say it's a, it's a plug, so it will be P1. Okay. And then, in parentheses, item one on your below material. And let's do that. So you do that for every component? Yes, you do that for every component. You got to assign a name to every component. Okay, uh, good. So we have a name for that. We're going to go over to the second one. And we're going to paste this. And this is this will be your P2, also okay. item 1. And okay. this will be your ring terminal terminal. So maybe... We will name it ring, and it's an item two. So you assign names. And I already have ports on all these connectors. These are already uh, complete connector designs. So you can check on the names of the ports. This one is called slip-on. And if you go to the parameters, you see that the name says slip-on. The entry port also says slip-on. These have to actually match. These two names, entry port and the name, they have to match. And it, it already understands, see, under a full name, it says P2, item 1, and the entry port is slip-on. So... He already has all that info in there because I pre-saved that info ahead of time. So I'm just grabbing things from a library right now. So same with same with that connector. If you go over and you select that port, it's it's called the ring. Okay. Property. And are you guys there? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. So uh, same thing here. Okay. It says ring terminal, mm -hmm. and the name of the term of the port and the entry port matches. That's very important. They have to match. Uh, and it's the same idea with the supplies. It has two ports in and out. So let's select in. Hit properties, and it says in and supplies and so all these names have to be set up <clears throat> and we have all the or all, all the connectors already that we're going to be using for this exercise and we can start routing wires between them so you're just going to grab a standard wire from your wire library and you can set all kinds of all type of wires in here and you're going to be routing wires between these connectors. How you, what you do is you just click near, select the wire, mm -hmm. and you click near the entry port, and it will pick up that port. Okay. See, it already picked up one side, and then you drag it to the other side, and you see it's routing wires between the connectors, and it's assigning names to them automatically. Okay. So, okay. so we routed three different wires, one, two, three, and what you do is you assign the names to the wires. So this will be my wire one, and because they're on the splice, I'm going to name them the same way. This is going to be one A, and this will be my wire. 1, B. So, I have all, all three wires created. And now I'm going to select all three wires at the same time. And you can modify these colors. All these colors are custom. So you can okay. have your selection color in a different color. I like yellow and, and green. <laughs> mm. uh, so you're going to go to the properties. Selecting the wires, you're gonna right click, 
put the properties on the wires. And this is where this is where uh, your wire size comes in. Okay. So uh, the properties and see the wire does not have any properties right now. It's all blank. So you're gonna go into this apply data set menu and you're gonna pick the size that you want. And let's just make the make these twenty gauge white wire. The kind of see this this all has all the parameters already. Uh, so you're not gonna be you know typing them in or anything like that. You're just gonna grab the setup file and gonna apply it to these wires. <clears throat> so here's all the info that we just grabbed. Hit apply. <coughs> so you so you know it's a white wire. It's 20 gauge size. The size, the thickness is here, the minimum bend radius, uh, all all the parameters. And just gonna you're just gonna hit okay. And this is this is basically this is basically how you create uh, a schematic in Creo schematics. And this like the info is usually provided to you by an electrical engineer. You know he knows how everything connects on the harness, so he will give you a sketch or, or a markup drawing. Of what you want, of what you want to represent, and you're gonna be transferring that information into Creo schematics. So this is a very basic harness, and you, now you gotta transfer that info into you gotta transfer that info into Creo into mm -hmm. your into your design. So what you're gonna do is export this as an XML file. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go file, export, and XML. And you want the pro cabling mm -hmm. option, and you wanna select a folder where you're gonna save that file. Right here, so file select or and you're just gonna type a name in test zero three zero eight eighteen so you export that as a xml type of file and it's just a extension but it's really if you open that file up it's, it's just a text file like a cnc code and just you just hit okay um and now we can start start up or pro e or, or creo you can minimize this go back to your to your desktop and start up creo and do we have uh, excuse me do we have any template for that uh schematic page no right it's a random PTC. yes yes uh, yes okay. yes we do I'm, I'm using existing designs as, as my template but uh okay. you can you can make your own template or we, we can provide you a template that you could you could use okay with all the parts so uh so that's the schematic part, and I'll show you how you use this info that you just created in, uh, to create a harness. So I'm just waiting for my creo to come up. Hey, quick question for you, Bart. Yes. For um, getting into Creo schematics, that's uh, it's the same Outlook password to get in there. Um. Or is there a password at all? There is no password. Once you have it installed okay. on your computer, 
unless you're going to be connecting to a wind chill, I don't think there is a password. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, so first thing you do is you're going to go to your harness assembly. And this will be a harness just like you've been creating harnesses. Um, <laughs> based on a base plate or a door panel or anything you're going to be working on. So we'll have a structure inside, a skeleton and all that. What I'm going to do today is going to be very simple. It's, I'm just going to be dropping connectors into into blank space. Okay. So you start with uh, an assembly file, a standard. It's not, we're not in cabling yet. You start with a basic ass assembly file and this assembly will be uh, eventually in your product that, that you're going to be assigning the, the harness to and you start assembling components where they where they should be uh, and you're gonna identify these components inside the window let me just find the part numbers the part numbers for these connectors that we're going to be using. First one, it will be a splice. Let's put a splice to get in first. And I have a model that I made for my splices. You can either use a splice that's under a part number or I have a special model. Okay. That's just called splice. Very simple. And just drop that into your model. That's my splice, and it has two ports. It has an in and an out port. And the ports inside the models are represented by coordinate systems. Yes. By coordinates. So this corresponds corresponds uh, exactly to what we have in Creo schematic if you go to this Creo schematic and look at or look at our supplies it, it has a port out and yeah. in yeah and i have the same here in out see these names they match so let's so let's bring another component um b1 Let's bring another component in. Mm -hmm. This will be or this this will be this one right here. Ring. Ring terminal. And it's on the outside. So you wanna position your supplies between connectors so they align. And I'm I'm just gonna use datum planes. assembling this quickly to to build uh, to build a simple harness model and I don't know where I did okay never mind Train distance. So I'm I'm doing a model very similar. It's gonna look very similar to this. I'm trying to build a model that uh, that looks close. And one last connect. Two, we need two more connectors. And this one is one is actually this and I'm gonna just copy that part number because uh, maybe not I think it's 
that one. So we need two more. That's not it. I have to look up a part number of the one that I want to use. So this will represent, this model will, will represent these two connectors right here. So I need two of these. Uh, and the same thing, I'm just gonna assemble it in space. And I'm just doing that for this exercise for, uh, for actual harnesses. You will be placing them on, in the assembly where they should be going. connector and I need one more So we have a basic harness assembly in creating an Creo base on on our schematic. We have two slip-on connectors and one ring terminal and a supplies in the middle. Uh, and now we can start using our uh, or schematic design file that we just created to route hardness, a hardness between these, route wires between these connectors. So you're gonna switch over, you were in the standard assembly mode, you're gonna switch over to the cabling, uh, and you're gonna create a new hardness, Yes. You're creating a new harness part, uh, and the way you import the information from Creo schematics, you're using an import icon right here, and the menu on the right pops up. Hello, you guys see it in the corner? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. And you want to select the Creo schematic option and whole XML file. <coughs> and, you, and you're going to browse to that file that you created. So you're browsing to the folder and there, there it is, test 030818 that we created just a few minutes ago. So you're going to open that up and it's going to load into your it's loading into your window your your harness design uh, the way you're going to know it's loaded you're going to go to you just import it and now you're going to go to the auto designate window going to open up this menu 
and you can identify see it has all the components that we created it has a p1 p2 iron terminal and a, yes. and, and the supplies has all the all these connectors that we identify in here that info is now in here mm -hmm. uh, so let's just see this was our p1 so we can start identifying p1 and i'm allowing mismatch which means i don't have uh I'm, I'm allowing a flexibility and I'm saying I'm gonna select these components myself because there are parameters where you can assign the program to recognize the connectors by the part name but uh, that's less flexible and I'm not using that so I'm gonna say allow mismatch and I'm gonna select a component so I, I'm saying P1 is this and hit apply and it knows that I want this to be my P1, and same with that one, this one will be my P2, and it says designated now, and you want your last component also, and your supplies. So now we identify all the connectors. Now the, the, the uh, they all have assigned names to them and I usually bring another column into my model tree from the model tree column menu there is uh, a cable info and designation column I add that to, to my to my model tree column so I know if I select a component, I know which one I'm working with. That's cool. <coughs> These have, you will have a column with names, and that's your hardness right here. So uh, next step, I think you guys, you guys are already familiar with the with that. Uh, next step is to route networks between your co between your connectors. So you have a network coming from this connector this will be your start so you start with your uh, port select that and just layer out the networks to you're out the networks um, and we can do this a little differently we actually don't want the supplies to be in there yet. We can we're gonna delete the supplies and I'm just gonna fix these because I don't want to do it. Um, what you wanna actually start with is just the connectors, not the splice. You don't want the splice in there right away. So you're gonna identify the connectors uh, and now you can route the networks between them. So you're gonna have a network between these two. Eric, are you asking a question? Because I yeah, I'm sorry, I wasn't online. Um, yeah. You were picking the the coordinate system and then the point, and then on the other side the point, then the coordinate system. Why are you picking that point? The points are just there to help you uh, route the networks. Oh, it's like a, uh, it's a fixed point and then it will do yeah, any bending just, beyond that? Yeah, it's just a fixed point and you can add, add your additional, like, points on the network. Okay, uh, okay. You're gonna, uh, I think, I think the guys are already familiar with routing networks because okay. of, uh, I've yes, seen, yes. uh, I've okay. seen what, uh, what they've, they've done and, uh, so you just route the networks between the connectors, kind of showing the harness where it's gonna go. So we are out a, a simple network, two piece network, actually one piece network, but uh, it contains two breakouts uh, that looks exactly like this, or close like this. Okay. Uh, and 
we have three connectors and now what you want is you want to in insert your splice so you need a point somewhere on the network that the splice is going to be attached to I, could, I usually just place a point on the network uh, and the rule is you want the splices to be around two inches away from any breakout so you want okay. so you want plenty of room for your splices and we're gonna insert that splice now that we had before but this is a better way I think uh, to get the splices in do we have that uh, that kind of information written down anywhere that splice should be two inches uh yes yes it's it's kind of like in the uh, design guidelines okay we don't have we have we don't have it written down i have it written down for myself okay. like uh some information about splices but uh it would be like a bad idea to get that written down summarize yeah uh, certainly for these guys but also for bill just so he he's got it as well so you're gonna uh Bring that splice. Which well, standard again. do you follow for that? Actually, sorry. What's the question? Which standard do you follow in this cabling? Um, we basically for for the harness design, we we follow the IPC standards. Okay, IPC. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna so you're gonna insert a component. Let's go back. So you're gonna insert. Uh, insert component. You're gonna find your splice model. And you're gonna attach that splice. You're gonna select the entry port and, and select the cable location right here. You're gonna select your location that you uh, that you created. And the splice will just drop in on the network on that location with the entry port that you pick. So I want I want to start routing or attach my splice with the in port. So I'm using this location as my attachment point on, on the harness. So in port on that point. And it will ask for an entry port and for an exit port it will bring that this menu pops out automatically and you want to select in for the entry and out for the exit and just hit apply and for some reason it's not working come on okay it worked um so you, you can hit update the update option here and you want to regenerate and it should say I don't think this worked I don't think this worked because the, it's like like the info for the splice it's not saying splice one here so let's try That's again good. let's try again insert component splice select the splice cable location entry Okay, now it works. See, now it's designated. Uh -huh. uh, now your component uh, components are designated. Uh, you have the network in between them. So you have a representation of that. Mm -hmm. And we are ready to route the cables. The final step is routing the cables. So uh, the cables are already set up because we had them over in, in curl schematics. So the cables are already in there. So to bring them into your assembly is you're going to hit this icon around cables. And it's going to bring up this route cable menu and to find your wires you're gonna hit the find icon 
and it will bring this little menu find cable menu and your wires are here the wires that we created your your wire one your wire one a and your wire one b and you can route them individually or you can route them all together and to route them bring them over to that side you're selecting three wires to be routed you say okay and they appear in this menu and and the wires each wire already knows where it's going it's going to follow your network uh, because we are routing the type of routing we are doing is via network or you can do a simple route okay. see now it's routing without the network yeah. but you always want to out with the network so you're controlling that uh, shape of the wire so every every wire that you're outing has parameters in them and it knows it comes from that connector from terminal slip on into into the wire in and on that side comes out and goes into a slip on and or goes into a ring terminal um, and you just hit apply, it routes the wires for you, and now you can, now you can view them. Now you have the actual wires. If you, if you go into your feature menu, and if you bring your features into your model tree, you'll see wire one, one A, one B, automatically created from the schematic that we created earlier so you have all three wires out it um, and that's basically it that's how you route these wires uh, using Creo schematic hmm. we can also show you you can save that we can. I can also show you how you unflatten the hardness. I don't know if you guys wanna. Have mm -hmm. you guys played with uh, with creating flat states, with creating no, flat hardnesses? No, actually. Okay. Do you wanna go over that really quickly? Do we have time? Yes. Yes. We yes, we have time. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's use this hardness that we created to create a simple drawing for that hardness. Uh, what you want to start with is you want to create a new file a manufacturing harness and this will be test okay. 030818 manufacturing MFG And you're gonna create you're gonna pick that uh, harness it's gonna take you to this menu and you're gonna pick that harness you just created okay and you need to type in one more name test for the flat state so you gotta do this twice and the name has to be unique so i call them under underscore or i usually just call them underscore but flat flat and it brings your your harness that you created into a separate window without the connectors right now and you're able to create a lay, layout a flat state using this drop down menu what you do is you say flatten layout you pick a point where you where you want your harness to start flattening out and I usually do a half an inch radius and it creates like a flat stay for you okay. like un, un, unbends all the wires for you and what you want to do is uh, assemble all connectors into here and I'm going through this very quickly because it's this is fairly easy. Uh, 
just have to like look through the menus yes. and you can you can manipulate uh all these wires you can bend them uh in here you can control the bend radiuses i usually just use half inch but you can modify this if you if you need to you can make it longer you can make it larger you can make it smaller uh, but i just used half inch does that affect the wires wire lengths as defined no no okay, uh, not nothing you do in the flat state affects any of your harness lengths good flat state you you're just creating uh a representation of what you already have so uh for, and I'll give you an example. See how long this is? If you're going to increase this radius right here to one inch, it's going to make that breakout a lot shorter. See okay. How it may, so it, uh, it calculates yeah. everything for you, basically. Nice. Okay. So you have a basic flat state. You mm -hmm. can create a basic uh, a flat state from your, from your harness, and now you're ready to create a drawing. You can bring all, all these models into your drawing. Um, let's put it on the B size. So, um, we have our main assembly. Let's add a view on the drawing of the main assembly. I should have picked a bigger sheet because that one's kind of small, but that's okay. We don't usually show the 3D uh, state, like 3D states on the hardness drawing, but I'll just do this for this exercise. So you can, to show you guys that you can you know, bring this as any other model into into drawing. But uh, what we are really interested in is our flat state. So we're gonna add a model, and we're gonna pick that flat, the assembly that we just created. We're gonna add that. We I just added that to my drawing model, and I'm gonna do a few. So, and let's, and, and and if your breakout is, if your breakout does not look what you want it to look, you can go back into your model, you can modify it. So I'm going to go back into my manufacturing, my flat state, and say, I want this 90 degree to be negative 90 degrees, so it flips that breakout to the other side. Okay. Because I want my drawing to represent look look more. I I want my drawing to look more like this. So I just flip that to the other side, and and uh, and that's how you add the flat state to the drawing. So you have all your components, and here you have your splice. Um, and this is one-to-one -one scale also. You can control the scale as any with any other models. And you can start dimensioning your your harness. Uh, you, you can you can get all the dimensions for your harness mm -hmm. from from the model. Okay. Another, so the next step would be bringing a wire table into the drawing. So you will uh, you want to give this to a vendor, you, you want to give him a flat state, so you show him how everything's connected. And this is a very simple harness, it only has three wires, but it might be, it's usually much more complicated. So uh, what, what you need is a wire table on the drawing. So we have templates of wire tables stored in a folder and I'm gonna bring in one of these tables 
and this is where all your information that you created mm. in in the schematics all the information from the descriptions the ports the the names uh everything is stored in that file and and the table are set up as the repeat regions so it grabs all that information and it presents it in in a in a table format so it has your wire name and i'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see so it has your wire name the component that the wire is routing from the the pin that the wire the wire the wires are routing from the component that the wires are routing to and the pin that the wires are routing to and my gauge size and the wire lengths that are calculated automatically Thank you guys. So I didn't play with any numbers. I didn't do anything. You know, I didn't manipulate. It was just it figured out how how long the wires were based on my assembly, based on the model. Uh, so that's what uh, that's where Creo schematics is very very helpful. It will just create that logical info for you and it will drive your model uh, it will help you to you know to figure out uh, what goes where and also for individual components for example these three components that we have in here only have uh, one wire going into them so the the, the pin out the, the the pin out is very simple one wire going into one component but you have you you, you might have a component that uh, you know two wires are routing to or three or four or or up to you know like 30 wires mm -hmm. so uh, sometimes you want a separate table for individual components so uh, we have another table a different one uh, that's called wire component and th this one is picking up the splice so it gives me a description of the component and it gives me all the wires that are associated with that component all the wires that go in and out so I see that on this splice I have wire one going in so this will be your wire one name these wires on the drawing so this is my wire one this is my wire 1b and this is my wire 1a So for every component, you can bring in a pinout table like that, that will say, and this is also a repeat origin that pick up a component and list all the wires associated with it. And you can, you can add more columns, like a wire color gauge or anything you would like to see. And I'll show you how, um, how you can change the repeat origin on, this, on these tables. So you go to the repeat origin menu under a table menu and you can say I want this table to control this component for example so it changes oh, and I want this mm -hmm. see now I created a table I changed that table to tell me what's going on with this component so it tells me this is my P1 item one on the bill of material it only only has one pin and on that pin I have wire one okay. so every one of these components has a logical info has that reference info inside them so you can use that in your drawing okay. so that's where uh, not only it will it will route the wires for you in your 3d model but it will it will also give you all for for your drawing automatically you don't have to 
you don't have to type anything in or uh, it's already in there. Yeah. And okay. that's very quick overview of... It was really good, actually. Yeah. I think this one, yeah. The string yeah. is more than enough now, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's very quick overview how you how you do things, uh, how you <coughs> bridge between Creo schematics and 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 Creo uh, model. Yeah. So I can Im export the XML file from Creo uh, schematic 2.0 to uh, Creo yes. parameter 3. Yes. Yeah, it's possible. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, okay. I think uh, I, I I think you can. Uh, yeah. We are using Creo schematics. I believe version is 2.0. Oh. Uh, the version is 2.0, mm. and we are using. I'm not even sure what or current current version of Creo is. Creo system information now. Yeah. About Creo, and we're using Creo Parametric 3.0. Mm -hmm. So, yes. but the any any other version will work, I think, it, because it's just a simple file. And if it doesn't work, then then you know uh, you can always come back to us or get uh, help from PTC, and we'll figure out which version will work with what. Because yeah. because uh, when you export, actually your when you're exporting your XML file mm -hmm. out of your Creo schematics, you have multiple options, and uh, like you can do pre wildfire 2.0 or or all these mm -hmm. options with you know with the version of you work with. Yeah. Okay. I missed a little bit of your your uh, presentation there. Mm -hmm. A couple of spots when you created the. Uh, the 3D harness. Yes. Uh, I think you worked in the part and you just randomly randomly placed the components. Uh, yes, pretty much like in space. Okay. For for this exercise, yeah. I I just put yeah. them in space. Uh, so norm I, uh, normally, uh, what you would normally what you would do is go into an assembly, assemble the part, the harness part in there, and then activate that, and then place components by coordinate system. On the base plate coordinate system, usually, part coordinate systems. Yes, correct. I'll show I'll show you guys a harness that I'm working on right now. That actually I built, and I'll show you how how a harness a structure looks like. That that's a very good question, Eric. Because, because I, I what I did was very simple. Mm. And it gets a lot more complicated when you're when you're working on an actual harness. So this is this is a harness that uh, I'm working on right now. We worked on it yesterday. Has multiple has multiple connectors. Uh, mm -hmm. Has multiple wires, multiple wire gauges, um, and the finished harness looks like that. And here's the skeleton. Okay. Here's the, the product that it's on, and this is a good example how I assemble my connectors. Okay. I have a coordinate system. That I attach my connectors to. So I only have one constraint based on, on the coordinate system. I, I, I have okay. coordinate systems set up already in, in this red component that I copy to my skeleton model. So inside my skeleton model, you can see that I have all these copy references, and mm. see their their coordinate system, and you can see them highlighting right here. They're right here, and I'm yes. and I'm using them to to assemble my connectors, and I'll move this out of the way 
you guys I'm sure you guys know how to do that, but I'll do this again just yes. for just to show you. Just to show you. So I'm using two coordinate system and it just drops in there. Um so that that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do for for some of them if I don't have a good reference like for that one it just sits in space I use my planes I uh, use my plane. one more mo hello yes uh, one more question actually yes. we're placing this uh, coordinate system as a uh, um, constraint whether you always take the part uh, the individual part coordinate system or you are taking the whole assembly coordinate system as a reference for all the uh, connectors? Um, the coordinate systems that I copy are from the actual model, from the from the 3D model that this uh, skeleton is based off. Uh, so uh, I go in and... But again, uh, if you're taking the reference of skeleton model, coordinate system, then there is a chance of missing reference if uh, uh, the model get updated. I'm not sure that I understand the question. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you the assembly that I took this from. Can you, can you ask the question again, Tapan? Uh, actually, we're taking all the references uh, uh, to the skeleton model, right? If something yes. added, yeah. So uh, these coordinate systems, uh, whether it's reliable to take the uh, references for uh, these co connectors and all, uh, I think after taking the reference, if we delete the reference and uh, uh, take the reference to the uh, main uh, coordinate system of the uh, skeleton model, then Hold. it will be good. Means uh, here you can see the top one that uh, uh, coordinate system is A underscore CSO. Mm -hmm. If you are taking the reference of that one, as an example, if you are if we are uh, adding that connector to this model, then that reference will be a uh, permanent one. Yes, mm -hmm. and we want you want these uh, references to be permanent because. Uh, you gonna be in control of of the model of the harness. If anything moves on the base plate, if the mm. components move on the base plate, uh, the position of the coordinate in your shrink up will not update until you say you you actually go in into your shrink up and say update my shrink up. Okay. So, okay. You, so you wanna, so you wanna be controlling, uh, be, because if you tie your your components to the assembly model, not to the shrink wrap, you know, and uh, another engineer moves that component, somebody that's working on the base plate will move that component. Uh, the harness will move with it. By that, it will not necessarily do what you want it, what you want it to do because it, it, the harness is not only tied to one place. Like the harness also has points on different components, and these components will not uh, move. For example, so you, your harness well, might not look good, might look out of place, or might do uh, something that you don't want it to do. So what you so so this creating a shrink up and and referencing your component positions in the shrink up prevents uh, your harness from crashing for example i would say from not looking the way you want to look or or from you know from just crashing for for example from people removing components from a base plate it it yeah. kind of forces you to review your harness every time there's a change on the base plate because it will affect your wire lengths and then you got to revise the drawing yeah. and then you got to do the updates it keeps your design intact and only yes, if you decide yes. to change it will it update yes exactly so yeah. we have to give auto update of this uh, our skeleton models we have to tick it 
you select the auto updates and so if something happened uh, and some changes happened in the main, mo main model then uh, they're supposed to be a change into the uh, skeleton model yes if, if you're making a change yes if you're making a change to your to your main model if you made a change if you moved something then you're gonna go in and and are you guys still seeing my screen Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're if you're uh, making a change to your main model, for example, moving something, you're gonna go in, and you're gonna select that shrink wrap, and you're gonna mm -hmm. hit update shrink wrap, and it will grab all the latest information. It will move things in your shrink wrap. Okay. So uh, that's how PTC suggests you build your. Uh, like your assemblies uh, structure. So, so this is a more complicated harness. Mm. Uh, and let me just show you the drawing for that for for this harness that has all the info that we talked about. Has um, for flat state as the wire tables pin outs for individual components mm -hmm. tells you you know you 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 have this wire on this pin and so on tells you the name um, and then your main wire table that tells you all the gives you all the wire names and gives you all the gauges and for example you have two different uh, gauge sizes. You got wire 20 gauge and wire 12 gauge size in that one. And of course, all your names, all your component names, all your component pins or ports, and and so on. Can you can you, can it's able to show us a flattening of this model quickly, if possible, or it will take time. Uh, of this, this one? Model. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll show you the flat state of that model. So this is this is the flat state, and and uh, when you create these, you're saving these. So they're, you know, you, you're not doing the flat state every time you, you know, open a drawing or anything like that. It's, it's a saved file. Okay. Uh, so that's that's what it looks like. So you basically, uh, you basically unflatting in this. This was, this was the 3D model. And you kind of work your way to all the components and create mm -hmm. this uh, this kind of representation. And of course, this is all can be modified. You know, you can you can uh, modify the orientation of these components. You can flip me. the comp mm -hmm. Excuse me, but actually, I have tried this uh, flattening of the wire. What will happen is when we try to flatten and select one point and give flatten, it uh, it will the wire will go randomly in some multiple directions. It will go. So after that, I need to modify based on the angles and bent radius which I have to give. Right? That right? Yes. 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 It will, it, it will not give you. It, it will not give you a pretty flat state like that. You you okay. have to you have to work. Uh, uh, to all the breakouts, it usually gives you a breakout at 80 degrees. It gives you 80 degrees for some reason. Yes, yes. I don't know why. So yes. you, you're gonna go in and modify these breakouts if they're 80. Make them I like 90. You know, I usually make them 90 degrees. And for example, in this harness, I added this band. This band was not in the flat state. I added this band because I wanted to fit my harness on on a sheet you know if, if in this scale if I, if this was unflattened it wouldn't fit on my sheet so i just bend this up for example so so um so yes you're actually creating a, a custom flat state uh not what 
back you know, is going to give you initially. You know, that initial flat state that you're getting is usually looks very bad. And, yes, and, yes. <laughs> yes, and, and you have to do a lot of work to make it a little prettier, you know, so it you, so you can use it in your drawing. Even at but, the pin joint, uh, those wires will randomly go. Yes, yes, they go very randomly and, and you have to... Uh, and and you have to you know fix in the all all the in, individual wires to to make to make them look good, you know yeah Got to it. to to make sure everything looks nice and aligns with uh, mm. with everything else so so it does require a little bit of work to to make, to make the flat state look look good look presentable okay guys have any more questions any other questions no, i think uh, i don't have any yeah. actually about okay. the tag <coughs> library part whether uh, it's uh, this is these parts are uh, with the ptc bundle or uh, we'll get uh, this library part from paper bus uh, I, I think you will get everything from paper bus all, all the all the components are are in common space uh they usually they usually models from the vendor we did not create these models they're like you know import files mm -hmm. from the yeah. vendor website eric uh, you, you have shared two folders right do we have these standard libraries in that uh that would be from uh pdm link or excuse me from uh windchill it's all in there you yes. just say open this file boom it's right there okay uh, no. the, the library of components, you're not going to have that. that. That won't exist because that's on a separate folder over here. I think we're going to have to work to get you access to the, the that network drive. I was okay. going to try and send you just the uh, that folder, but I might need to give you access to the network drive so you have like all the Creo schematics content. Yes, okay. we. I think we got to work on that and figure out how we how we can share these files with you. Okay. Yeah. We are able to get a uh, standard uh, component from Winchill in Paramatric. The only thing we need is in Creo Schematics, all this library. Yes, yes. 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 Okay. A lot um, of information. Yeah, a lot of information. Yeah. Um, yes, it, it, it's quite a bit, uh, especially for like larger projects. That's why that's why I wanted to give you a very simple example yeah. first, like just with, with a couple right. of connectors, uh, so it's not that overwhelming at first, you know. Uh, but but once you get the the idea, you know everything works of the same, uh, basically ba basic basic principle, you know, just connectors and routing cables between them and identifying all the all the parameters inside. It's like Creo schematic. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, for uh, for the one that I was just showing you, I'll, I'm gonna show you how how Creo schematic looks for that. So it's a little messy. Mm -hmm. I don't always take my time uh, creating these schematics, but that's how it looks like. These are my representation of connectors, my wires. Uh, everything has mm -hmm. parameters assigned. All the connectors have parameters assigned. So that's, that's what I'm using for that one. That's okay. basically it. Um, do you guys have any more questions? And later on, when you <clears throat> when you work through this, you know, if okay. you have any questions, you can always email me or or send me a message. 
Okay. Or then anything that. specific when you get stuck, uh, and try to, mm. I'll try to help you out. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. No problem. Yeah. Eric, okay. is there anything else that you were, the, we wanted to kind of cover today, or? I think that'll do it for now. Uh, these guys are going to take a class on Monday, and um, you know, go through that in addition to what you just showed them, and then. Mm -hmm. I put in a request to install um, Grio Schematics on Sharath's machine, but not on two uh, top ends. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want it on just one machine or two machines? There's only one license, so only one person can use it at a time. Okay. No, if uh, more work is flowing, then uh, we can come in shift and uh, support. I think that's yeah. okay. Okay. In one system, it will be enough, I think. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's get it get it going and see how see if they can do it and how how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, his part still there? Or? Yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Bart. Yeah, it, it was really helpful, actually. Yeah. Very good training session. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. We I'll have got you... most of the things now itself, and Monday we'll try to get better idea on this. Yes, I, I think yeah. the class will help you a lot too. Uh, yeah. I think you'll learn a lot more. I, I was yeah. just, I went to the to it very quickly, but um, yeah, but just figuring out like every every step to every step is a little bit more involved, and and there's more info that that that's there, you guys still have to yes learn. So. Okay. I, I think training would be a lot, a lot of help. Okay. Okay, okay guys. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank, thanks a lot, thank, Eric. Thank you, thanks for your time. Sure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thanks a lot. To you. Have a nice day, guys. Have you nice too. Day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.